What is the fourth dimension? It's not a mysterious concept that scientists are trying to discover, or one that holds unknown concepts like parallel universe or other realms, but it does depend in what context we place it. The physical four dimensions are composed of two things, time and space. And I don't mean that like space-time. In physics, the fourth dimension is time complementing the other three spatial dimensions that we perceive around us, while in mathematics it can also be an additional spatial dimension. Objects in four-dimensional space are explored mathematically and have properties and behaviors that differ from those in 3D space. Yeah, Luca, but it's kind of crazy that there are several meanings for the fourth dimension. It seems like it's not as objective as the three dimensions that we're able to perceive. You're absolutely right. Our brains are wired to perceive and understand the world in three spatial dimensions. The fourth dimension is time in Einstein's theory of relativity is a fundamental concept that helps explain how the universe works. This concept has been supported by numerous experiments and observations, making it a robust scientific theory or essentially a fact. In relativity, space and time are interwoven into a single continuum known as space-time. Events that occur in the universe are described in terms of their position in space and time. This is different from the classical Newtonian view where time was absolute and separate from space. In space-time, three spatial dimensions, length, width, height, are treated on equal footing with time. This means that an event is specified by four coordinates, three to describe its location in space and one to describe its time. Oh, I see. So, it's like a coordinate graph, but instead of x and y axis, we have x, y, z, and t. The fourth coordinate gives you an idea about when a certain event happened, and we're in space. Whoa! I love this video! You nailed it exactly. One of the key insights of relativity is that time is not absolute and uniform. It can vary on the observer's speed and strength of gravitational fields they are in. This leads to phenomena such as time dilation. A practical and everyday example is GPS satellites. GPS satellites are moving at very high speeds as they orbit the Earth. According to special relativity, time moves slower for objects in motion compared to those at rest. As a result, the clocks on these high-speed satellites would naturally tick slightly slower than clocks on the Earth's surface. However, there is also a counteracting effect from general relativity to consider. This theory posits that time moves faster in weaker gravitational fields. Since the satellites are further from the Earth and experience less gravitational pull, their clocks would tick slightly faster compared to clocks on Earth's surface. These two effects, velocity causing time to slow down and gravity, are in a sort of balancing act. However, they don't exactly cancel each other out. Instead, their combined effect, after taking into consideration which one is stronger, determines how time will flow on the satellite compared to the ones on Earth. When the scale tips towards velocity, like in the case of a high-speed satellite, the dominant effect is time dilation due to motion, special relativity therefore making the clock run slower. Conversely, if the scale tips towards a stronger gravitational influence, like near a black hole, for example, the dominant effect is time dilation due to gravity, general relativity. In this case, the closer the object is to a massive body, the slower time runs for it, compared to a location with a weaker gravitational field. How cool to see the effect of this fourth dimension in real life. Is it the same way in mathematics with dimensions? You said earlier that in math it is an additional actual spatial dimension, much like up, down, or to the sides. What does that look like? The fourth dimension in mathematics is more of a theoretical construct. You can't picture it physically. So, though a 4D representation of a cube would be called a tesseract, it can't actually be properly pictured, because it is impossible for our brains. It's like putting a tiny ant on a mug and having it walk. It can only go forward, back, or to the sides, but not up or down. Therefore, it cannot visualize it as a three-dimensional object. The most accurate way to understand this object is mathematically. But is it possible to visualize it like a shadow of the real thing? If I take a mug and shine a light on it, I'll see its two-dimensional representation, a shadow. So, would a 3D object be a sort of shadow of the 4D object? It very much is. 
Whenever mathematicians try to portray a tesseract, the best way to do so is to have a cube within a cube. It's not actually a tesseract, but it gives you an idea of some of its properties. All right, so the fourth dimension in mathematics is like shapes that we can't picture, right? Oh no, that's not at all. It's also possible to embed objects into dimensions. A one-dimensional object, like a line, can exist on its own 1D space. However, when we embed it in a two-dimensional space, like a plane, you gain more possibilities for analysis and visualization. For instance, how it can be extended or transformed within the plane. Embedding a 3D object in a four-dimensional space is not necessary for most practical purposes, but it opens up new avenues for theoretical exploration. In 4D, a 3D object can undergo transformations and have properties that are not possible in 3D. Yeesh, my brain hurts from picturing all of this. But I understand, 4D is not a mysterious realm, but a really practical tool in mathematics, physics, and even real life. If you like this video, check this one out. I'll see you there.